Hey guys, my name is Mrs. Bradley and my son Trey is in kindergarten with all of you. Today I'm going to share with you about my career as an art teacher. I'm sorry that I can't be there with you because of course I have my own classes that I have to teach today. However, I've created some fun activities for you guys. But first, let's learn about what it means to be an art teacher. Let's go. All right, so first, my love for art started a long, long, long time ago. My mom was always a doodler, and then my dad was really into photography. And so naturally for me, I kind of started liking art. And then I had some really, really, really great art teachers in middle school and high school, and I continued on my path for art. So when I went to college, I decided to pursue arts education. And I went to school at Bowling Green State University, which is in Ohio, where I grew up. And I graduated from there with a bachelor's degree in fine arts with a focus in arts education and for me a focus in photography. So that degree, I took all my classes to be a teacher and all my classes to be uh, for art as well. So I have a ton of classes that I had to take um, in order to graduate and become a teacher. And that was a long, long, long time ago. Um, but luckily, because I took so many art classes and had some really, really great instructors, I have been able to teach every single grade all the way from three up to 12th graders and felt confident that I can teach any type of art. So sometimes I teach art where it's just basics of drawing and coloring. Sometimes we go into painting and sculpture and ceramics, and I've even done some digital photography. After I graduated college with my degree, I then had to apply for a teaching license or a teaching certificate. So kind of like when you start to drive, which is a long, long, long time for now for you guys, but you have to go and you have to apply and take a test and then you get your license. So teaching is kind of similar. You get a license that is good usually for four or five years um, and then you have to renew it. And to renew it, you have to take either some more classes, um, or some what we call professional development where you go and sit in some trainings to learn how to better yourself as a teacher. So just like you guys have this long path of education ahead of you, teachers continue on their path of education and continue learning all throughout their career. So I have currently a teaching license in Florida. I have also held a teaching license in Washington, DC where I started my teaching career and I taught there for six years. And I have a certification that is a long expired, but in Ohio from when I graduated college. So I technically have been certified to teach in three different states, which is super. So now you're probably wondering, well, what does she do all day as an art teacher? She's an artist. She gets to play and paint. She gets to play with glitter and she gets to draw. No, my friends, that is not all. So just like every other subject in your school day, there are standards and we have to plan lessons. Lesson plans are meant to help engage you guys as learners and to make sure that you are learning because that's what we're here in school for, right? The art part is the fun part, but there's still concepts that you have to learn, such as primary colors and secondary colors and tertiary colors and lines and shapes and forms and patterns and rhythms and all kinds of art concepts. So. I sit down and I look at all the standards that I need to teach. And standards are things that we want you to learn by the time you leave kindergarten or first grade or second grade or third grade. And we have those in art too. And then I look at those standards and I look at what is the best way to approach learning those standards through art making and through some sort of engaging activity. So this week in my classroom, we're learning about colors and we've played some color card games where kids have to mix and match and make math equations with colors and color color wheels and all kinds of other things before they even get to their projects. So teaching the art projects is only one part of my day. All right, so this board here has some of the questions that I want my students to be able to answer and what I expect of them by the time we're finished with our projects. Here in the middle are my projects. So this one here is what kindergarten is working on. We watched a video by Jack Hartman uh, that talked about the colors of the rainbow and some movement and activities. And then we did a guided drawing of this rainbow with these funny little faces that are inspired by an artist named Chris Uphuse. Over here, my first grade, we are studying artist Heather Goller and we are talking about primary and secondary colors. So when they start coloring their imitation of her artwork, they're gonna be using primary colors to color their vase and then secondary colors for their 
um, table and then they get to pick whatever colors at the top but that way I can un I can see that they understand the difference between primaries and secondaries. Second grade right now is studying artist Ted Harrison and he uses warm and cool colors. So for their uh, color concepts they have to focus on warm and cool or hot and cold and they're making these uh, suns over either water or mountains they got to choose and then they're using cool colors at the bottom and warm colors at the top. Third grade is studying balloon artist or sculpture artist, I should say Jeff Koontz, and he makes these giant balloon dogs. Um, so third grade is learning how to draw the balloon dogs in the city. And then they are learning about value and tints and shades, which is lighter and darker colors. And so when they paint their balloon dog, they'll be painting it to show the lighter and dark. So they'll be showing some highlights and then shadows like you can see to make it look realistic. Fourth grade is gonna be recreating uh, Keith Herring and they're focusing on complementary colors. So they made this grid and then they're gonna be drawing some of these dancing figures inside. And then they'll color the backgrounds or they'll paint the backgrounds and the people uh, complementary colors. And then fifth grade is learning tertiary colors. So they're drawing these chameleons and they have to divide their chameleon into 12 parts and they're gonna practice mixing uh, nine colors. So each each section will have one, but they'll have the primary colors, which are red, yellow, and blue, and then they have to mix nine other colors on the color wheel to paint their chameleon. And then over here is where I have my vocabulary for each of those classes. So now it's time for the fun part. It is time to create. I'm going to guide you through recreating your very own Chris Uphughes inspired hearts with silly faces like you see here. This is Chris Uphughes. He is a muralist, which means he paints on the walls of buildings and monuments. He is known for his pop art style murals, and he even has one right here in Orlando, Florida. If at any point during the rest of the lesson, you feel yourself getting behind, what can you do? I'm going to tell you. Quietly raise your hand and ask your teacher to pause the video. All right, guys, to get us started, we're going to start with a nice wide V at the bottom of your paper. You're then going to move up and make a smaller V at the top of your paper. Up next, we're going to use curved lines to form the outer edges of our heart. Think of it as like a C or a backward C or even a rainbow. So you're gonna start at the small V and make that curved line down to the bottom. You're then gonna do the same thing on the other side to complete your heart. All right, I'm gonna move my heart off to the side so that I can now show you guys how to make some of the faces to include inside your heart. You can go ahead and put your pencil down so that you can watch all of the examples and then pick your favorite. These are some of the faces that you can make. We have the eyes that are looking sleepy with a big smiley face. We have eyes looking up with the tongue sticking out to the top, a wink face with some teeth, Another set of eyes looking up and a mouth wide open. We have a happy face down here with the tongue sticking out the bottom and then a little bit of a worried face over here. You can mix and match any of these that you would like. If you like these eyes with this mouth, that's perfectly fine. If you wanna do two winking eyes with a sleepy mouth, you can do that. But I'm gonna show you just a couple of them so that you know what to do on your heart. First, if you are doing two open eyes, you're gonna need two ovals. And I'm drawing a marker just so that you guys can see them. You guys will be drawing in pencil before you add color. Most of the eyes have, <clears throat> excuse me, a black section facing one direction. These eyes are looking to the right. And I'm gonna color quickly just so that I can show you. If you wanna add eyelashes, you can. The nose is an upside down U or like a rainbow. And then if you want just a basic smiley face, it might look like that. So super simple. If you wanna add a little bit more detail, I'll come over here next. 
you can add some eyebrows. And again, if you wanted to add some eyes, you could add a little Pac-Man to show the highlights, okay, which we get when we look into the light. Again, the rainbow nose. And on this one, I'm gonna show you how to do the tongue hanging down. So first we draw a happy face. Then we draw the tongue, which is a U, put a line. Then we're gonna draw the bottom part of the mouth because the tongue is sticking out of the mouth. Okay. The wink eyes okay, are curved lines to show that the eye is closed. These are the eyelashes, rainbow nose, and again, the mouth. This time I'm going to draw the tongue sticking up so you can see. Again, this time it is the rainbow arc, but a little bit taller, and the line. Okay. If you wanted to do the teeth, Okay, I'll do the sleepy eyes, this time with the teeth. You're gonna draw your two ovals, the eyelids, some U's, there you go. And for the teeth, you're doing them the same way that you did the first tongue, or I'm sorry, this one up here. So you're gonna draw the mouth, two teeth, and then you're gonna show just a little bit of the bottom of that mouth. Okay, so those are a couple. I'm going to go ahead and put all of them together on one image so that you can look at them while you add faces to yours. All right guys, it's time to add faces to our hearts. So go ahead and start with two nice big ovals for the eyes, the rainbow arc for the nose, and whichever mouth you choose. Have fun. Now's a great time to hit pause so students are able to draw in their faces. The last step in completing your Chris Uphughes heart is to color and trace over all your pencil lines with a black crayon. All right, guys, thank you for your undivided attention. I hope you had a great career day learning about all kinds of awesome careers, including what it means to be an art teacher. And I really hope that you had fun making your Chris Uphughes inspired hearts and that you share them with those that you love. Um, they are meant to be beautiful and share kindness and warmth. So those goofy faces and warm colors um, are meant to bring sunshine to people. So when you see somebody being down, um, give them a hug, give them a heart and show them empathy and that you care. So I'm so happy that I got to spend a little bit of time with you, even if I don't get to see each of you in person. Um, I hope you guys have a wonderful spring break and continue creating and making your own voice heard in the world.